You may have noticed on an SAT score report that you have two subcategories on the reading section. They are words and context and command of evidence. So these are two very important areas on the SAT reading section. Today's video, I'm going to show you how to tackle both types of questions on the reading. And then I'll also give you a bonus strategy that you can learn last minute in order to do a great job on the test. Okay, so I'm on a reading section and we are going to look at the first type of question, which is a double question. So let me link these together. As you can see, 33 and 34 go together because 34 says answer to the previous question. Now, this second question is called a command of evidence question, and that's something that the SAT has as a subscore. So there's a lot of questions like this. You can get a lot of points if you get good at these. So all you have to do when you have these types of questions is work backwards. So what you'll do is you'll read the first question. And this is a hard passage, by the way. This is the old passage written in the 1800s. So if you can use this strategy and do well on this passage, you can do it on any of them. The question says, what does passage one suggest about the US government's provisions for the institution of slavery as framed in the constitution? Now, what are some key words or specific things that help us that we can look for in the lines given? Well, constitution is a super important word. So when we go to lines, 30 or 10 through 16, 25 to 27, et cetera. We're gonna be looking for lines that talk about as framed in the constitution. So let's go do that. As you can see, A is on lines 10 to 16. So I'm gonna go up to lines 10 to 16 and I'm gonna read that. It's from we to earth. We have extended our territory from the Mississippi to the Pacific oceans. We have acquired the Floridas and Texas and other territories sufficient to double our geographical extent. We have increased in population, in wealth, and in power beyond any example on earth. I don't see anything in these lines about the Constitution, so I know that these aren't the lines that I need. So let's go back down. I'm going to cross that off. Now, one thing to note when you do command of evidence questions is, I'm not surprised I'm crossing off A. A is an outlier. Notice that the lines are in a different paragraph in A than the other sets of lines. So chances are, if you have a straggler that's outside of the group, that's not the right answer anyways. So I'm not surprised that we're crossing that off. Okay, I'm still looking for something that talks about the Constitution. So I'm gonna go to lines 25 to 27. I now to made it. All right, let me bracket that. Starts at I, ends in made it. I now come back to the question, why cannot this union exist forever, divided into free and slave states as our fathers made it? Interesting, I have a synonym for constitution. It's as our fathers made it. And that's how subtle this test will be. They won't say the word constitution, verbatim, they'll give you something that means the same thing as constitution. So these are the lines talking about the constitution. So I'm going to pick these lines. Now we need to find a match for 33. So let's read that one more time. And then we're going to pick a match that says the same thing in 33. I now come back to the question, why cannot this union exist forever divided into free and slave states as our fathers made it? So I'm gonna go look for something that says the same thing in 33. And I see C is perfect because does not need to be changed means the same thing as exist forever. <clears throat> All right, so that is how you tackle command of evidence questions and use your doubles going backwards to get the lines first, then match it up with an answer. Now I'm gonna show you another type called words in context. And words in context, a good example is really the next question on 35. This is another subcategory, so it's an important part of the reading section. As you can see, they're asking about one specific word and then you have to replace it with another word in one of these answers. 
Now, don't just think, okay, element means ingredient. I'm gonna pick A. You have to read it in the sentence in order to determine which one is the best fit. It's in context. You're not just picking a definition. Sometimes the word that you think is the right word based on the definition isn't because it doesn't fit in the sentence. Words have different meanings and different usage depending on the context. Let's go read how they're using element in the sentence. So I'm gonna to go to 67. I'm gonna underline the word element and I'm gonna read it. But has it been so with this element of slavery? And now I'm gonna read the same sentence again with the other four words in there. But has it been so with this ingredient of slavery? But has it been so with this environment of slavery? But has it been so with this factor of slavery? But has it been so with this quality of slavery? Now, trust your gut, the best one is factor, just from the way it sounds. So that's all you can do on these words in context. You're gonna put them into the sentence, see which one sounds best to you. You might not get every single one of these. It's gonna be based on your experience as a reader and how you've heard words used in the past. So a big tip that I have for all of you out there is to just read as much material as you can. Read magazines, read novels, read textbooks, read articles. Fiction and nonfiction, the more exposure you have to vocabulary, how words are used, the better you'll end up being with these words and context questions. But there's your strategy. Okay, the last tip I have for you guys is how to whittle down to the right answer with a strategy called if it's half right, it's all wrong. Now, I can show you how it works on 41. Granted, we're not going to read this passage right now. That would take way too long. But in 41, you're going to read the question, obviously, and then look at your answers. Now, sometimes it's easier to comb through the answers and figure out which ones are wrong instead of just trying to pinpoint the one that's right. If you're trying to zero in on the right answer, you might end up picking a trap answer instead. Because what this test does is they provide you with an answer choice where some of it is true and sounds really good, but then there might be one word or phrase that's incorrect. So if you can be a detective, figure out which ones are wrong, and then you'll get the right answer as a result, you're in way better shape. So if I'm on 41 and I read the passage, let's say, and I go through the answer choices with a critical eye, I'm gonna say, okay, A, Cast doubt on the other's sincerity. Well, we're not talking about sincerity at all in this passage, so that doesn't make any sense. That's a no. Criticize the other's methods. They didn't talk about the methods that they were using. There was no methods involved here, so that's a no. Reproach the other's actions. Um, there was no actions taken either. It's not like one person was saying, oh, they did this, and then the other person was saying, I didn't like that they did that. There was no actions involved in this passage. So the only answer that I can pick is undermine the other's argument because with it's half right, it's all wrong. There was something wrong with every other answer choice. So I'm gonna go with D. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Keep practicing the reading section and I'll see you again soon.